The Compact Cassette, a truly remarkable music medium that rocked our worlds for many years until it was kind of replaced by the Compact Disc. Now, Cassette is kind of making a comeback. I mean, not like, you know, exploding everywhere. I mean, you can't, like, find cassettes at Walmart again or anything, but some bands are releasing music on cassettes, and maybe you're like me, you like to collect them. Now, I'm a child of the 80s, so as you can see, all this stuff I have on display here is from the 1980s, and it's some of my favorite stuff. But maybe you like different music, or, you know, maybe you just want to make your own mixtapes. Well, first of all, how do you know whether or not a cassette is of any good quality? Cassettes aren't like records. When you find one at the store, and you look at the shell, you can't really look at the shell and say, okay, is this tape really in good shape? Well, here's some tips, and I won't spend a whole lot of time on this, because really what I want to talk about is finding a Walkman. So we'll do that here in a second. But as far as choosing cassettes go, here's what I would do. If you find a cassette, and it's in a shell like this, where it's nice and clean, and it's in good shape, and you take out the tape, and you look at the at the words that are written on there, if those are all in good shape, and nice and clean, I would say there's a pretty good chance that that tape is going to be a nice clean tape for you. If it's dirty, looks like it's been thrown in the the front floorboard of a car and stomped on, it's got grease and dirt and all kinds of stuff on it, I would completely avoid that tape. Because it was probably in a car, and it probably was abused, and which means it's been subjected to a lot of heat and so forth. But most of the time, if you find a cassette at a thrift shop, it's going to be pretty cheap. And like in my case, uh, the local Goodwill here has them for 50 cents a piece. Savers has them for 69 or 79 cents a piece. But if you find one, here's some other things you can look for. If the cassette was recorded on chrome, which I don't know how many record labels used chrome tape, but you'll get a little bit better fidelity if it says chrome on it. Sometimes, and not always, and almost every tape has it, they'll have Dolby uh, noise reduction on it, which is Dolby Type B, and sometimes that helps as well. But uh, most of these tapes were mass duplicated, and not a lot of love and care went into recording them. They were uh, recorded at a really super high speed. So there really isn't any guarantees on cassettes. You'll have a better chance of enjoying your cassettes if you have something high quality to play them back in. And again, that's what we're going to talk about today. How do you choose a Walkman that's going to do the job for you? I have some examples here of portable cassette players that I'd like to show you, most of which, as you can see, are Sony. And I have one really, really cheap one here that's made by Jensen that I'm going to uh, let you listen to as well. So let me go through the features on these particular units and why I chose them, and then I'll let you listen to each one. I'm going to put the same cassette in each one of these so that you can uh, kind of hear for yourself the differences in the sound quality. So if you're going online to buy one of these, it's like, what are you, what are you supposed to pick? I mean, there's a million of them out there. I mean, literally. Um, lately, I went in and, and did some searching around on eBay, and I ended up buying this one right here. And I'll tell you in a second why that one's so special. So let's start from left to right. So this guy here, this is a sports Walkman. And it's called sports because you can, you know, go outside and play football with it. No, it's not. It's actually designed to be really rugged and have the ability to take it jogging or accidentally drop it on the ground. And, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to survive. So the tape goes in like this. So you put the tape in uh, from the top. In the rest of these, the tape goes in the lid, and then you close the lid. But this one, you set the tape in there like that, you close it up. There's a, uh, there's a rubber seal around the outside, so you could like run in the rain with it, and it's not going to uh, damage your tape. This one has an AM, FM radio in it. The dial on this one, the, you know, like the label for it, has fallen off. Uh, it has a place for two pairs of headphones, so that may be an important feature for you. And there's a, a tuning dial here. You can see it moving across. Of course, on this case, you'd have to guess what channel you're on. 
and then there's your volume control there. There's really not a lot of extras to this guy, okay? So that's the sports one. The next one is this Sony Walkman here. It's a uh, WMEX 152, and this one does not have a radio in it. This is just a cassette player. It has uh, an anti-rolling mechanism, which is actually a good feature. It keeps the cassette from just fl flopping around all over the place, especially when you hit stop after a fast forward or rewind. But uh, it, it does have this mega bass switch on it. And on the top, it has uh, AVLS, which is an auto volume limiting system, which was kind of ridiculous. But you'll see that in a lot of Sony products that are made for portability. You got your volume control there, and then your normal chrome switch, which is really just a, a treble cut for tapes that sound really tinny. And then uh, there's your controls there on the side. Everything is manual, okay? And it has a clip on the back to uh, put it on your belt. It even has a place to put a, a power cord up to it. All right, so I kind of like this one. I like the looks of it, and I like the fact that it doesn't have a radio in it because, you know, who needs a radio these days, right? You want to listen to the radio, you listen to your, uh, you know, Spotify or some other thing on your Walkman, or not your Walkman, on your uh, iPhone or Android phone. So there's that one, and I'm going to skip this one just for a second here, the silver one. This one here, of all these here, I think has the best sound quality, but I'll let you be the judge. I think this one was really well made. It has a clock on it with an alarm. It has um, presets going across the front there. Uh, and just so we don't forget, the model number on this one is WMAF65-BF65. I'm not sure why it has two of them on there. It does have a place for a belt clip. I did take it off just for fun. Now this one has Dolby B noise reduction on it, which isn't the end of the world if you don't have it. But if you're an audiophile and you want to hear your tape played back the way you recorded it, then you want to get one with Dolby B noise reduction on it. This one also has auto reverse, which means it will play both sides of the tape without having to flip the tape over, which is pretty cool. So there's your direction button there. Fast forward, rewind, play, stop. On the top, you got some cool controls here. You got your volume, your normal chrome uh, switch like we talked about earlier. You got your Dolby noise reduction on and off, your tape radio function, and it even has a light to tell you if you're going in forward or reverse on tape playback. The only thing I don't really care too much about this one for is how thick it is. It's thick and it is rather heavy. Uh, even though it only uses two AA batteries. It also has a place to uh, hook a power adapter if you'd like. So, but I do like the way this one sounds, and this one has a three position mega bass switch on it, which means you have like low, low bass, mid, middle of the road bass, and just like ridiculously blasting undesirable bass, at least in my opinion. So um, this one, like we said before, now that you can't see the tape through the front window, but the tape goes in the lid like that and closes up. Okay, so that's that one. The next one is the, this one I just bought off of eBay. It is a WMFX495. Now this one is really special. Let me tell you why. There are no actual physical buttons on it that uh, are piano type keys. For example, like on the other ones that we saw before, you've got these buttons that you literally, when you press down, you're doing the action of the mechanism. You're pressing the tape head forward into the tape. This one, however, has a, a soft mechanism in it, which means that when you hit play, which the play button is right here, it's doing all of that work for you. Um, so it's really kind of a cool feature. This one has a bunch of crazy stuff on it, like TV and weather band, which, you know, the TV portion isn't going to be useful for anyone anymore since the whole world is now digital. Um, but uh, it does have an FM and AM radio as well, and that, of course, is still useful. Um, I like how, like, when I hit play on the front here, it actually says play on the front, which is kind of cool. And if you're doing another function, such as fast forward or rewind, 
you'll get those on the display as well. Now what I have noticed is that with this particular machine, which is also auto reverse, like the last one we saw, this one has a tendency to malfunction. And I've had ones before that have the soft mechanism where again the, the controls are on the front. And that's pretty much your first giveaway that it's going to have that logic mechanism in it is that uh, the buttons are on the front and not on the side. For example, on this one, this button here just lifts the lid. So, and again, you put the tape in the lid. And then there's a hold button here that keeps you from hitting the stop button in the middle of your favorite song accidentally. And there's a cute little window there on the side where you can kind of see the tape moving around in there. But watch what happens when I hit play on here. So I go up here and I hit play. Uh, see, i got to cheat it first, make it think there's a tape in there. So I'm going to hit play. It's actually moving in reverse. It moved in reverse before it moved forward. The tape hasn't even engaged. But watch, if I put my finger in there and hold my finger on it, the tape heads go ahead and engage, and it starts playing. Now I'm going to hit uh, change the direction. Well, and it's sort of even ignoring me. So I'm going to put my finger on there and hold that down, and there it goes. It takes off. Oh, and there it's going in reverse again. So I've seen these before that have this logic mechanism in it, and it malfunctions a bit. But uh, I figured out a way I can trick this out and make it work. So I'll do that so we can hear this one demonstrated. So let's do a... Uh, oh, we we got to talk about our cheapie. Sorry, I almost forgot. The cheapie of this bunch, and, you know, this is worth, like, I don't know, three dollars at uh, at a Goodwill store, maybe a dollar. Um, is this Jensen again, an AM/FM radio? Uh, basic functions: uh, play, fast forward, and stop. This thing doesn't even have a rewind on it. That's just how cheap it is. Uh, you got your volume control here. Uh, you know they're trying to be cool like Sony and putting a green uh, headphone jack on there. Got your tuning control and your tape and AM FM switch right there. And a bell clip. But just the feel of this thing, I mean it just feels flimsy. Um, it just it is it's just a piece of junk. So I'll even let you hear what this silly thing sounds like. Alright, so let's go on to sound quality. One of the funnest things about cassettes is being able to make your own mixtapes, much like you saw in Guardians of the Galaxy, if you happen to see that movie. You can make your own mixtapes, and then you can make labels and stick them on there, and really that's kind of fun. That's the fun part of, of cassettes. Other than collecting pre-recorded ones, you can make your own mixtapes and give them as gifts or wedding presents or, or what have you. So... Um, you know, you can put your own message on a, on a cassette tape and mail it to a friend who lives overseas, and it's a unique way to send a message to someone. Of course, make sure they have a cassette player before you do that. But, all right, so I have this uh, tape here that I made, and it has uh, a song on it, kind of a jazzy tune. And I'm going to let you hear this jazzy tune played on my really good tape deck first so you can kind of get a standard of what it should sound like, and then we'll go from there. Okay, here we go with Jazzy Tune, played back on this Pioneer CTW850R. Okay, so there's how it should sound. Now let's uh, pull up our first model. Here it is, the Jensen SCR60. The first thing you'll notice when I hit play is the amount of motor noise you hear. Hear that? So the, the unit generates enough noise on its own. Here's the tape.
not absolutely horrible, right? Not too bad. Okay, so that's the Jensen. Another thing you'll notice, this thing is actually noisy. I'm going to put it up by the microphone so you can hear it. So yeah, the thing makes its own noise uh, through the speaker and through its uh, enclosure. All right, so the next one will be uh, this guy here. This is the uh, WMEX152. Just rewind it a little bit. Plug our cable in. This is with Mega Bass on. bad. A little bit tinnier than the last one. A little bit more high-end uh, range coming through there. So let's go with, uh, yeah, let's go with Mr. Sportsman here. This is a, uh, this tape deck is a jock. The jock of portable Walkmans. Wind it here. Those are all up. This one's kind of fun because you can actually run the tape with the lid open if you wanted to. All right, we'll play. some kind of squeaky noise coming through. I don't know if you heard that. Kind of like a squealing sound. Not quite sure what that was about. But uh, we did not hear that on the other decks. So something weird going on with this one. And let's see. Okay, here's the really cool fancy one. I'm going to show you that uh, absolutely awesome bass. Sorry, I'm actually away from the microphone. The microphone's by the speaker here. All right, so here we go. This is the snazzy one. And again, these presets are for the AM FM radio. I failed to mention that earlier. But uh, yeah. All right, so here we go. I'm going to turn Dolby on. Okay, now let's hear that extreme bass. just because uh, I really like the sound of that one so sorry just a little a uh, little bit partial to this guy all right 
So I like him the best. I think he has the nice, smoothest, cleanest sound. I don't know. I don't know if it's because of the Dolby B noise reduction that they have a little bit better uh, audio components in there or what's going on. But uh, now let's do the fancy logic controlled one. I'm not sure if that's the actual name for it, but uh, let me see if I can get it to go here. Okay, back to the fancy one again. One of the other things I wanted to mention about this is uh, the ones with the buttons that are on the front. If you rewind or fast forward the tape and it gets to the end, uh, it will shut off, shut off automatically. Where the, as the other ones with the keys on the side, the buttons on the side, if you rewind or fast forward, when it gets to the end of the tape, you got to hit stop. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there and hum and run your battery down. So just something to keep in mind. Um, also with this one, you may be wondering why I bought this off eBay and, and there's something wrong with it. Well, I got it cheap because I, I knew there was something wrong with it. In fact, uh, the person was honest and said there was something wrong with it. But one of these that's working costs a lot more money than what I paid for it. So in any case, um, let's go ahead and hear how she sounds. And she beeps too, which is kind of fun. that one it kind of works when it wants to and it also beeps to tell you that it's, uh, it has reached the end of the tape so there you go guys you kind of have an idea um, again this one is probably not going to be the most reliable unit that you'll find online unless you find one that's that's in you know got a guarantee or a warranty with it but uh, like I said, these tend to be not working when you find one like it. Uh, there's also some that I found online that have metal uh, on the inside. Like when you open up the lid to put the cassette in, you usually will see the tape heads at the end down here. And, um, and there'll be like a little metal bar here, like a, a little latch that holds up the lid. Um, those are really fancy ones as well, but I think the, in, in this case, the reason this one's plastic is to give you that lightweight uh, Walkman, you know, making a very lightweight. By the way, when I rotated this earlier, that was not the, uh, the machine's fault. That was me moving it with the uh, plug uh, kind of coming out the top there. Uh, another little fancy feature that this one has is there were special headphones that you could get that had a remote control on them. And with that remote control, you could actually stop, fast forward, rewind, that, that sort of thing here on the top. Um, the other thing that, that some of these fancy models may have, and it's a really cool feature if you can find one. In fact, I haven't seen this feature on any of them other than my digital compact cassette uh, portable player, which is on my channel, uh, is the ability to just skip a song. Just hit the fast forward button, it goes to the next song and starts playing. Uh, usually that's called automatic music search or AMS and I don't see that feature on any of these but if you find a Walkman with that feature on it that would be cool so anyway I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, this demo of these units and uh, again 
there's a there's a wide variety of reasons that you would pick a particular Walkman, but uh, it just depends on what you're looking for. I think um, if you want fancy, you would get one like this with the buttons on the front. Any model, like an AWA, AIWA, Sony, Panasonic, those brands. Um, if you want something that's a little heavy duty, literally, I mean, this thing's heavy. Um, something that's heavy duty and more reliable and probably is going to work out of the box but has uh, Dolby B noise reduction and auto reverse, then I would go with one of these. Um, if you're just, you know, an absolutely cheap person and you just, you know, not really that wanting to spend a whole lot on a cassette player, I would go for something like this guy over here just to get the simplicity um, and uh, ease of use and uh, not a lot of money being invested into it. But... Typically, if you see one with Dolby B noise reduction, you're going to pay a little bit more for it. There's also some really, really small Walkmans that have rechargeable battery packs that plug onto the side. And uh, those are usually really expensive. And they're like barely bigger than the tape itself. Um, but you can see this one here is just barely bigger than the tape itself. But it's not made out of metal and it's not like, you know, got battery chargers and cool stuff like that with it still uh, still keeping it simple so anyway um hope you enjoyed this hope this was helpful in helping you decide what kind of walkman to buy and uh in some cases uh, what kind of tapes to buy when you see those used as well so happy collecting if you have any questions just uh, drop it down at the comment uh section below here uh please subscribe to this channel and uh it would really uh be appreciated and share this video with a friend and happy cassette collecting.